engineering, uh, which is a, a technique to treat large bone defects. And it involves extraction of the stem cells uh, followed uh, by their isolation and 2D cultivation for cell expansion. And thereafter, the cells are seeded in a 3D uh, scaffold, which mainly consists of a supporting frame and uh, the stem cells and some bi biochemical factors like growth factors and uh, the medium and uh, external uh, stimuli. In this case uh, that, that I'm gonna talk about, uh, the external stimuli will be uh, electrical uh, stimulation to promote uh, differentiation of uh, these uh, MSCs into bone cells. Now, after the cells have, uh, uh, they have formed a, a tissue, this uh, scaffold consisting of these cells that form the bone tissue uh, is placed back into the uh, bone defect and uh, there, there uh, the, the scaffold will slowly uh, degrade and uh, the bone would, this bone uh, defect uh, will be gone because, uh, because yeah, the bone would heal. Um, <clears throat> so in this talk, I will be focusing upon only the electrical stimulation on uh, stem cell proliferation and uh, differentiation. And so in uh, these, experiments, uh, the cells were extracted uh, from the bone cells, from, from the bone. Uh, so these uh, particular uh, MSCs were uh, take, taken out from uh, uh, adult bone and uh, they were placed in uh, scaffolds, uh, like I showed you, uh, which were in turn placed in uh, cell chamber. And this chamber was con connected to a, a to transform a core uh, through which uh, uh, AC supply was given. So uh, through the process, uh, eventually the cells experience external electric fields. And um, sorry, there is a little thing here. Uh, the, the cells were exposed each day for four hours followed by a four hour break. And uh, the total duration for which the, for which the cells were uh, stimulated was seven days, 14 days, 21 days, and 28 days. So to quantify the cell proliferation, the total number of cells were counted at each uh, of these days, at each of these time points. And uh, to quantify the differentiation, uh, uh, the total uh, a ALP uh, signal of the cell, which is uh, which is an um, uh, enzyme which is produced by the cells, which are just going to uh, differentiate into the bone cells. So uh, basically, uh, uh, the stem cells have high ALP signal, and as the cells gradually uh, differentiate into bone cells, they they start to show the, uh, ALP signal. So I just wanted to tell you if you have any questions, please feel free to stop me. I'm really uh, glad to, uh, to talk about them uh, then and there, then wait till the end. Uh, so, yeah. So uh, from these experiments, we obtained the total number of cells and the total ALB signal in these cells. And uh, the total number of cells shows a growth uh, with and without uh, stimulation. And uh, the a ALP signal, the, the total ALP signal uh, in this cell population uh, shows initially a growth and then it falls down. So, so there is a decay. Uh, Sorry, I had a question. Yeah. So, so yeah. The, the amplitude of this field is, is somehow taking arbitrarily or is it connected to any real electric field that the cells are feeling? Yeah, so, uh, so, so the, exactly. So this, uh, the strength of the uh, electric field uh, here in this experiment is 0.36 volt per meter. And uh, this is uh, the field strength uh, which, uh, which uh, the cells take well. So, so if, you, if you go to high uh, strengths, then, then this is not good for cells and so, uh, this is also a field strength that is uh, uh, subjected to the bone defects when, when the uh, 
uh, implant is placed uh, on top of the bone. So, so these are the basically these are the field strengths uh, uh, which the cells can can take and and still uh, happily grow and divide and differentiate. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Sure. So yeah, and uh, experiments show. So these experiments show, showed that uh, the total number of cell over time, uh, um, there was no significant uh, dif difference between uh, the cells that were uh, stimulated and the cells which were not stimulated. <clears throat> so if you look at the case where the cells are not stimulated, uh, 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 the the data can be fed by these two uh, functions. Uh, so the so the total number of cells grows uh, quadratically with time. And uh, as I as I said, uh, the ALP activity or signal uh, goes up and then uh, decays. And and it is very well captured by these two uh, functions. So uh, theoretically, uh, the state of the stem cell population is, uh, we describe it by this quantity Na of T, where uh, A signifies the level of the ALP of the cell at a given time T. Uh, and um, N is uh, the number density of cells uh, with ALP level A at any given time T. So from this quantity, we can uh, or actually get two more quantities, uh, uh, which is capital N and phi. And capital N is uh, the total number of cells at any time t. And uh, phi is the total e e ALP level in all the cells at any given time t. Um, so the general theoretical framework that uh, we developed to describe stem cell uh, dynamics uh, it has um, is uh, described by the by the change uh, of n a of t with time, and uh, the different terms uh, that contribute to this change are given uh, by a, b, c, and d. Where the first term uh, a um, uh, describes the process by which a cell divides, and during this uh, division, uh, the ALP level of the cell gets redistributed in the in the two cells that it divides into and the the second term b is uh, the process by which a cell terminally differentiates into a cell type so in this case it would be the bone cell and because uh, experimentally it is known that uh, 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 that the bone cells show lower ALP levels than the uh, stem cells. So, so this is uh, basically a cell which you lose a cell in, in, uh, uh, through this uh, process B, uh, uh, which has an ALP level of A. And then there are these two processes uh, where um, C is the process by which you have an ALP influx uh, through intracellular biosynthesis. And similarly, you have a process D, which accounts for ALP outflux through intracellular degradation. So these are all the different uh, processes that contribute to the change in the total number density of cells with ALP level A at a given time T. Uh, a very simple model uh, accounts for experimentally observed uh, uh, data. And in this model, uh, we have just uh, two processes. The, the first one is uh, cell division. And uh, the second one is uh, the ALP outflux uh, through the cell. <clears throat> so uh, for cell division, uh, we have um, uh, taken the choice of the uh, cell division kernel uh, as SKD and uh, uh, delta A minus A prime. And uh, such a choice of uh, cell division kernel means that the ALP uh, redistributes equally and uh, uh, in, the, in, the, in the two daughter cells. And it has the same amount as the cell that divided. So it's, it's, uh, it's, um, 
it's kind of a symmetric um, uh, but non-conserved cell division. Because if you sum up the ALP level of the two daughter cell, then it is basically twice of the uh, parent cell. And but, the second process, sorry. So, sorry, maybe this is a stupid question, but before in the, in the division, you had a gain loss and a, and a, sorry, a gain term and a loss term, but now you only have the gain term. Uh, yeah. Can so you, can you explain further this? Yeah, sure. So if you uh, take the choice of the cell division kernel, which I show here in the table, and if you plug, plug this in into this equation, then it would uh, simplify to just one term which has, uh, which is, which is here actually. Okay. Okay. So, yeah. So, um, so because I have Delta A minus A prime, um, yeah, if you will plug, plug this in the, the mm -hmm. second term, uh, will have just N of A and it would have KD. Uh, okay. There's a Delta function that would come. That is the term which is left. And the first one, um, it's, it's the, it's the, um, combination of these two that that gives you this one one term okay the, the first first term mm -hmm. yeah. yeah yeah it's a bit of a calculation but but you'll find that this is basically boils boils down to this first term which is shown uh, please yes uh, what's the meaning of a small a small small a yeah so small a is the alp level of a cell which uh, I described here. So this is uh, somehow in this uh, cartoon, this, this would be, uh, yeah, so it's going from zero to one. So uh, A, A would be how much ALP is there in a cell. Okay, thank you. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, so, and the second term is uh, the term that uh, accounts for the outflux of uh, ALP from a cell uh, through a slow uh, degradation. And uh, the choice of uh, function that, that we have used here is for D, D0A is uh, D0 times A. So that, that means that, that uh, a cell which has a high ALP level will, will uh, degrade faster. So it, uh, it depends upon the ALP level of a cell. So with this choice of uh, uh, the, yeah, the choice of the function for KD and DO, um, you can derive, uh, you can derive the equations, uh, the time rate of change of capital N, which is the total number of cells at a given time T. And uh, this is simply uh, uh, dependent upon the cell uh, division rate, which is KD. And for, uh, if, if we use, uh, the choice for KD as two by T, which is, uh, that means the cell division rate decreases with time. Uh, you find that the solution of DN by DT is, uh, N, is, a, is a simple NT, which is uh, proportional to uh, T square. Uh, and this is exactly the function that, that uh, describes the time dependent uh, behavior of uh, the total number of cells as a function of time. Yeah, uh, and the second quantity phi, which is the total ALP in all the cells at any given time, uh, the dynamic uh, behavior of this quantity is, is um, has two parts to it. So there is KD phi, and then there is minus D, D0 phi. And uh, again, keeping the, keeping the same choice of function uh, for KD time dependent form as two by T. Uh, solving this equation, we see that uh, phi has the analytical solution, which is quadratically growing. And then uh, at, uh, after a typical time of, which is given by uh, one upon D zero, it uh, exponentially decays. And that's again exactly the functional form that describes the time dependent time dependent behavior of the total ALP in the cell population. So are there sorry, any... yeah, sure. I have a question, please. Uh, if uh, A is the ELP activity, and it between it is between zero and one, 
Yeah. Why in the underground there is zero empty? Uh, where, where is... Uh... You said that A yeah. uh, is the uh, ELP activity mm -hmm. and it's, it is between zero and one. Mm -hmm. But on the integral, mm -hmm. between zero and FT. Yeah. Uh, is this so, okay? Yeah. So, so this is, uh, so uh, the first thing is that the ELP activity going from zero to one, it is um, uh, just for uh, representation, which I've chosen this uh, scale. Uh, but uh, but the ALP activity per cell is actually uh, is 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 can, is to be shown on a different scale. But but just for the for the sake of showing here, I put it between. I have normalized it between zero and one. Uh, in the integrals, in the theory, it is going between zero and infinity. Uh, of course, that's that's um, uh, that's a situation that that has to be taken care of. So so the. It is it is clear that in uh, cells you cannot have ELP activity too too high. So 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 you have an upper bound, uh, but um, yeah. So so we are we are looking at a mean field scale where uh, yeah where where this kind of effects are very weak, or the contribution because of this uh, 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 if you have an upper limit is is weaker. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Um, yes. So, yeah. So, so this. So, up till now, we had we had looked at the case where uh, the cells were not electrically uh, stimulated, and uh, we can do the same analysis for the case where the cells are stimulated with external fields. And uh, uh, the when you when you fit the same function to to the total in number of cells, and uh, the total ELP activity at different time points. Uh, we see that uh, uh, that the cell, uh, that this quantity D is zero, uh, that uh, describes the behavior of the ALP outflux from the cell. And uh, that in turn means uh, uh, points to the differentiation of the cell to the bone cell, to the stem, stem cell to the bone cell uh, uh, has, has a site um, difference. So for the case without Electrical stimulation, it is uh, around six, five, five, five point eight days. And there is a slight difference uh, with electrical uh, stimulation, which this uh, kind of a theoretical framework can capture, which is six, six point two. Um, yeah, so I think this, uh, so, so there, so the two conclusions from uh, the first part of the talk is uh, uh, from this theoretical analysis is that uh, the cell division rate, uh, it, uh, it uh, is inversely proportional uh, to the cell density. Um, so um, as um, one, one can show uh, for the choice of uh, function for KD, uh, which is two by T, uh, that uh, it can be rewritten as uh, one upon square root of rho. And uh, so that basically means that the cell division rate is uh, decreasing as the cell density goes goes up. <clears throat> so uh, somehow it signifies that the cells uh, have a signaling mechanism uh, that can uh, sense the cell de density and can this this can in turn regulate the cell uh, division. And uh, the second conclusion from this analysis is that the cell, uh, the, the degradation rate of ALP inside the cell is inversely proportional to the external field strength. And uh, uh, so these, these are the two conclusions from the first part of my talk. Uh, and uh, if there are any questions here, um, I'm really happy to take them before I move on. I have a question. So, uh, how in the on the left side, how, how do you? Uh, I didn't get. How do you get the second equality? That two over t is uh, yeah. one over square root of rho. Yeah. So uh, to to uh, get the second equality, uh, we have to use the expression for n. So n n goes as uh, this pre pre factor times t square, and. Uh, 
if you rewrite um, t as a square root of n. I see. Uh, okay. Yes. So you will have two two by n, and then divide by uh, v, which is the volume of the scaffold in which the cells are placed, and uh, that doesn't change. Uh, so it's a fixed fixed thing. So you divide. Uh, so so you get n by n zero. N zero is the total number of cells at the start of the experiments, and you divide by v zero, both uh, top and bottom. Uh, Numerator and denominator, and you find this is, uh, which is uh, basically rho. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Sure. Okay, so if there are no other questions from the first part of the talk, then I'll move on. I will switch gears and I will move to plant leaves. Uh, so uh, we all have uh, looked at leaves, um, and I think the best best time to see leaves is basically in fall season where where they fall on the ground and and we love to kick them as we as we walk through the street um, uh, uh, one really particular and very striking feature of all plant leaves is is this veins uh, and uh, one the, the 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 vein that goes uh, through the center of the leaf and sort of divides the leaf into two halves is uh, called the primary vein and uh, then from these emerge secondary veins, uh, which are slightly thinner uh, than the primary veins. And then even more finer than the secondary veins are the tertiary veins and it goes uh, so on and so forth. Uh, what is known in experiments is that this whole uh, very complex vein pattern does not emerge at once. It's it's uh, showed in experiments is that uh, it's been seen is that they observed sequentially if if I would say so uh, that means that the the primary veins are the veins that are formed first and then after a few days uh, the secondary veins emerge and then the tertiary veins and and so on and so forth <clears throat> and uh, also the proliferation of the vein cells. Uh, is is very uh, well defined means that the vein cells uh, uh, in the in the first days uh, basically the one one day after uh, germination which I have not shown here uh, you cannot differentiate between a, a non vein cell and a vein cell but as the days go on uh, from third third day on you clearly see that you can differentiate between a vein cell and a non vein cell. By the by, the shape of these cells, uh, and by that I mean that the vein cells are very are longer and uh, sort of elongated, and uh, the non-vein cells have a very uh, symmetric shape uh, and square square-like shape. So you could you could quantify you could clearly see the difference in experiments where you can label the vein cells with some. Uh, uh, proteins and uh, you can you can mark their shapes. So, in all of this, there is a growth hormone, auxin, that plays a very important role in the plant and the leaf development. Experiments have shown that when you suppress the uh, biosynthesis of auxin, the leaves are smaller, as as shown here in this in this uh, picture. Uh, the leaves are smaller and the veins are not uh, uh, formed as in the uh, wild type. You have the central vein, the primary vein, and then you have some sort of secondary veins, but definitely not the tertiary and more uh, finer veins. And then if you also, uh, experiments have shown, if you uh, suppress intracellular auxin transport, uh, this can also disturb uh, the vein patterning. So here you you see in the in the in the non perturbed case you have a vein pattern after five days as is expected. But when the intracellular auxin transport is uh, perturbed or it is I think in this case it was uh, lowered, you find that there is a very thick mid vein, and there are secondary veins uh, that come. Out of the of the mid vein, and then there are very very few 
uh, tertiary veins. So auxin clearly plays a very important role in, uh, in uh, the leaf growth and the vein patterning. What is also known in experiments uh, is that uh, auxin is not produced in all the cells, but in the, in the first few days following the germination, it is highly localized in few cells. And uh, these are the cells that would become the mid vein and the secondary veins. So here as uh, th this is a, a biosynthetic gene, uh, TAR2, it is called as TAR2, which is a label for auxin biosynthetic gene. And uh, when you follow that in the, in the first few days of the, of the leaf following germination, you see that it is highly localized to those cells that would become the mid vein and then the secondary vein. So we developed a model to describe uh, leaf tissue growth and uh, study the vein patterning. Uh, and uh, the model is, uh, uh, in this model, the, the, the leaves are, sorry, the cells in the, in the plant leaf tissue are described by interconnected uh, polygons. And uh, the polygon has a certain size. Uh, so it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a two dimensional approximation because in the, in the first few days, the leaves are quite thin and they, are, they can be thought of as a lamina. And uh, so uh, the, the shape of the tissue in this mod model is uh, defined by this function E, which has two terms to it, where uh, A is the cell area and uh, A naught is the preferred cell area. So that's, 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 the, that's the size of the cell that it would keep uh, because of homeostatic uh, uh, pressure. And uh, you have a prefactor to it, which is gamma, which is basically uh, tells or uh, defines the compressibility of a cell. And then you have the second term uh, where Lij is the length of the cell wall uh, and Lij naught is the preferred cell wall length. And uh, there is a prefactor to the second term, uh, which is defines the stiffness of the cell wall, which is uh, similar to a, a spring. So if you have a hooks, hooks, spring, so you have a prefactor and uh, the energy of uh, such a spring would be given by K, Kx square. And so that kind of a reminiscence of uh, that, that, that kind of a term. Um, yeah, and so, here, so, uh, so I, would, I would come to the cell growth rate uh, a bit related. I would, I would not talk here about the cell growth rate. Uh, from, from this function E, uh, you can op obtain the, the force that acts on each vertex uh, of uh, the cell. Uh, if you uh, differentiate uh, uh, this function E uh, with respect to the coordinates of each vertex, uh, you would get the force that acts on that vertex. And uh, from that, you can also calculate the stress, the total stress that acts on a given cell, on any, any, any cell. Now, besides the tissue growth at uh, the scale of a single cell, there is also transport of auxin taking place. So, uh, Auxin is uh, being produced in cells, but, but it is highly localized to the cells that would be the vein, vein cells. So that would become the vein cells. And then auxin can uh, diffuse through the cell walls and be transported to the neighboring cells. And that is uh, captured by the second term here, uh, D, uh, which would be the diffusion constant. And uh, because of the cell growth, uh, the, um, the uh, concentration of auxin per cell uh, gets uh, diluted. And so that, that uh, acts as effectively like a, like a sink of auxin. Uh, and so, yeah, I should have said that before, uh, C is the, is the cell auxin concentration. So it's, it's a total number of auxin mo molecules 
divided by the cell area. So now uh, uh, we couple the tissue growth and uh, dynamics of auxin. And the way we do it is that the cell area growth rate is a function of the cellular auxin. So uh, the concentration of uh, the cells auxin. Uh, and so this uh, dA by dt for a given cell is uh, given, the growth rate is given by G, which is a function of C. And uh, the way C uh, changes is that uh, when the concentration, auxin concentration of a cell is below a threshold, then the cell grows at a growth rate G0. But when it would be above that uh, threshold, then the cells would start to grow at a rate G1. And uh, the way uh, the rules for the cell division is such that when the area of the cell becomes doubled, the cell would divide along the short axis as shown here in this cartoon. Yeah, with these few uh, ingredients in our model, uh, we initialize the leaf at the start of the experiment uh, that would correspond to a leaf bud at, uh, at the two, two day after uh, germination. And uh, we describe the cells such that uh, you have few cells which uh, produce auxin, which are shown here in dark green. And light, light greens are the cells that do not produce auxin. And the gray cells are the cells that represent uh, the cells which are uh, stiff, stiff based that are uh, connected to the plant. Uh, plant. Uh, <clears throat> so these, these cells do not divide and uh, yeah, they have very high uh, stiffness. So uh, with these ingredients and the values for the model uh, uh, taken from experiments uh, literature, um, when we run the simulation, you see that the cells grow, divide, and uh, wane cells, which are shown in dark green, they get constricted to fewer cells and they, they, get, get, uh, they, they finally get this kind of a, a shape which is quite similar to as observed in experiments. So uh, maybe I, I should, I should uh, point this out that this growth rule of uh, uh, cell area uh, that depends upon oxygen concentration, this is only applying to the cells which are non wane cells. The wane cells at all times grow at the same rate G0. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, if you look at the concentration of auxin in the whole leaf tissue, uh, uh, you see that there is uh, the wane cells have high concentration of auxin and then it has this kind of a characteristic uh, diffusion, diffusive uh, profile through the tissue. We could, we could calculate the forces that acts on each vertex of a cell. And uh, we see that the forces that act on the wane cell uh, uh, from the non-wane cells are, are, are quite high. And these are the forces that uh, const constrict the wane cells from um, uh, dividing in uh, sideways and uh, and they sort of like squeeze them so that they become uh, elongated. Uh, yeah. And you can also calculate the total uh, cellular force map, which, which would be basically the sum of all the force vectors for a given cell, and then shown by this color code. And we see that the forces in immediate neighboring of the, of the main cells, it is, it's, uh, it's quite high. And uh, so what, what, this, what this tells is that the uh, wild type vein, vein pattern of the mid vein is uh, mainly because of the immediately uh, neighboring cells and, uh, and not, not, uh, not too far, far away from the uh, mid vein. Um, so it is a cells which are 
immediately next to the vein cells, uh, how they grow uh, uh, defines the shape of the midvein. So there was also experiments uh, that were done uh, where auxin transport was inhibited. And uh, clearly in these experiments, the veins uh, were quite different from in the, in the con control case. Uh, we, we saw a quite uh, broad mid vein. Uh, here in this case, the experiments are uh, looking at just the first uh, two to three, three days after germination. Um, and it can be also seen here, uh, the auxin bio, biosynthetic cells are no more highly localized, uh, but they are quite diffuse and uh, dispersed. So in the simulation, we take the diffusion, the, the, the diffusion uh, term, uh, which accounts for auxin transport across the cells. Uh, and uh, uh, if I decrease the value of D uh, by some fold, uh, then what we see is, yeah, I think the simulation is running. Uh, what, what we see is the cells grow and divide. But in this case, um, because auxin transport is much lo lower to, to cause the neighboring cells to reach the threshold so that they can grow faster, uh, the midvein cells uh, do not experience sufficient force uh, that would cause them to be cons constricted and, and, uh, and uh, squeeze them from the sides. Uh, to get that uh, that that shape that is uh, el elongated, so here we, we see also in uh, simulations that the auxin biosynthetic cells have a very dispersed uh, pattern. And this is also uh, yeah shown here uh, that the diffusion profile, the the auxin concentration profile in uh, in these experiments is quite different from the wild, wild type. And uh, the forces that act on the vein cells are, are much we weaker uh, as compared to, to the wild, wild type. <clears throat> so there was a experiment, a double inhibition experiment. And uh, in this experiment, you have the con control case where, where, the, where the cells were not inhibited or treated with anything. They were, they were just grown. And uh, when, when these cells uh, were, treat, were treated with auxin transport inhibitor, we lose the midvein pat pat patterning as, as we expected. But then when the same leaves uh, were treated with auxin uh, synthesis inhibitor, Interestingly, the, the vein pattern was recovered as was seen in the wild type. So the theory explains this observed uh, 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 behavior. And uh, so the explanation is, is that if you, if you think of uh, uh, um, the, the, the case where uh, the cell divisions are uh, the cell division rate is much slower as compared to the auxin transport, then you can uh, basically, um, sorry, th th there is a typo here. So, so, so C is not a function of T. Uh, you can consider this to be a, a steady state and uh, you can, can solve this. And the solution for this uh, turns out to be a simple uh, prefactor, which is uh, dependent upon the auxin bio biosynthesis, which is S0, divided by uh, the square root of the cell auxin uh, transport rate, uh, which is given by D and the cell growth growth rate. Uh, now, if the, if the um, as in experiment, the cell auxin, uh, auxin synthesis rate has been decreased and uh, the cell auxin transport rate has been decreased, then to recover the auxin profile across the tissue, uh, one has to also decrease the cell growth rate. Uh, so if you, if you uh, divide for instance S0 by a factor uh, and um, 
also divide D by a factor as uh, was done in the experiment. And also here to get the same profile, you would have to divide it by uh, the G by a factor two so that this would uh, cancel out here in the exponential term and also in the free factor. And that is what was also uh, confirmed in the simulation. So you have the wild type case where you get the midway in pattern as observed in experiments. And to this, if you decrease the oxygen transport rate uh, by a factor here, it was uh, 20 uh, divided by, by 20, you lose the midway in pattern and uh, then to the same, ex so, so similar experiment when you add also decreasing the growth rate and the oxygen biosynthesis uh, by a factor, then you again recover the vein pattern as was seen in the wild type. So uh, clearly uh, in, the, in the early stages of the mid vein development uh, is, is, is clearly uh, regulated by interplay of mechanics due to the cell growth and oxygen distribution because of intercellular transport. And so with that, I would like to thank you for your attention and very happy to take questions. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Uh, I give you a virtual clap uh, in the name of everyone. Um, so we um, this is open to questions. Any other question for speakers? Yes. Students? Anyone? Okay. Oh, the yes, please. There was a question. No. Okay. No. Okay. Maybe I have a question about the the model in, um, in the tissue of the of the plant cells. So you showed some qualitative behaviors in which um, you you change the growth rate and then it changes the pattern in the in the plant, which is very interesting. Um, I wonder, I wonder if you can take experimental data from the microscope and uh, images and and fit any in a way uh, many parameter of your model. Is it possible or is it too complicated? Because it is yeah. very complicated to do a simulation, no? Yeah. So, so one one thing which which we are actually now look, looking at is is one way to quantify because here it is at still at the qualitative le level. So we want to quantify uh, one, one way to do that is, uh, is to obtain, uh, so here in experiments, so here in the simulations, what we can get is uh, uh, the, the cell height and width. And uh, this is also similarly uh, a quantity that can be extracted in experiments. So here, like I showed you in these pictures, uh, yeah, so in this way, so we can, uh, we can basically quantify the shape of the cell and uh, fit it or, or uh, compare it with the, with the ones obtained from the mod model. So that would be one way to compare and that's, that's an ongoing work. So we have to, yeah, we have to seg segment these, these leaves and, and uh, yeah, get these shapes. Also, can you discriminate between different uh, free energy functions? Because you, you assume there is one free energy you know, in your model. Mm -hmm. So this would be more complicated you know, if you want to compare models with different interaction terms. Yeah. OK. So, okay. so this is, um, so, so, in, so this, these, of course, there could be more, they're sure. I mean, it's, it's far more complex than, than what, what this, uh, Function captures, but but these uh, could be uh, uh, thought of as the as the main contributing factors uh, for that define the shape shape of the cell. So you have a turg up pressure. So the uh, plant cells are are mostly filled with water, uh, and so that 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 is what uh, defines this first term, and uh, the second term is basically the bond tension. So so that's that's basically keeps. Uh, keeps the length of the cell wall because uh, the plant cells uh, are different in the in the sense that they have very long cell walls and they have really uh, do you cannot squeeze them 
infinitely to a to a point where you see some kind of uh, rearrangements uh, as have been seen in uh, zebra fish uh, like t1 and t2 uh, so that that is uh, that is a uh, no no go here in in uh, in plant plant cells so um, yeah so what yeah so this 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 kind of a framework has been very popular in explaining uh, shape shape changes in fruit fly of course the functional form of these these terms is not the same same there um, but yeah so it it could have uh, ad additional terms uh, that could uh, describe additional biological processes uh, but at this level we have, we have kept it also simple because we want to learn as much about what's what's happening and not get lost in several terms and yeah okay thank you um, so any other question from the audience uh, what plant species uh, you used uh, for the experimental data because uh, you often just mentioned that it is the uh, the the plant system, blah blah blah. But I think that probably the the prop this plant if the plant leaf development may be a little bit uh, specific to the certain range of uh, the plant species rather than it is working for all plants, right? Yeah. So just I wonder primarily the uh, which plant species actually. Those experimental results regarding the auction or that kind of things are obtained. Was it is it Arabidopsis or what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, so the plant that was used was uh, Arabidopsis uh, here. Yeah. So these are these are the leaves from from that 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 plant. Mm -hmm. And I think you you yeah you're correct in 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 uh, pointing this this out that that the leaf leaf patterns of um, of uh, is uh, dependent upon the species, yeah. So you you have different leaf patterns. You have the uh, ma maple leaves, which are which are having uh, yeah like like this kind of a shape, which is quite different from from this leaf. Um, yeah. So 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 here it is uh, a rabidopsis, Thaliana. But do you believe that that at least some the some uh, some general the on the kind of the uh, the the but do you believe that at least your uh, your modeling framework will work for the other plant uh, the leaf of other the development of leaf of other plant species as well just uh, the probably their parameters may be different but do you think that that kind of patterns will be Universally observed for other plant mm -hmm. species. Mm -hmm. So one one thing which is uh, which we focused at here in uh, in this uh, species of plant is is we we were looking at just the formation of the mid wing. So this this leaf has a vein vein pattern where you have a mid vein and then you have secondary veins. Um, so if we want to study a different species of plant, uh, I, I think uh, we have to still have this kind of a, a structure of, uh, of wane pattern where you have a mid wane that uh, is formed first. And from that emerges the secondary veins and so on and so forth. Um, so it's, it's um, interesting thing to look at, uh, but uh, this mod model and this uh, kind of a uh, description which I showed here uh, uh, is is um, for such leaves where you have a mid vein that forms first uh, during the uh, developmental course, and uh, from from there on forms the secondary and tertiary veins. Yeah, thank you. Thanks. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> All right, other questions? Okay, so I don't see any other. Uh, so then uh, let's uh, thank again uh, Jonathan for his uh, nice talk. Um, thank you very much.